Hey everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial, TensorFlow, as you can see. Here I have opened my Jupyter Notebook. Today I'll show you some basics and introduction to TensorFlow. As previous my tutorial video was about introduction to convolutional neural networks. And before programming our convolutional neural networks in TensorFlow, I should make a, a little introduction to it, some basic functions and so on. So right now I'll make a short introduction to TensorFlow, some basics of it and so on. You can download this notebook from my GitHub, I'll upload this to here. Then I'll do a one video tutorial about deep neural networks and also I'll make it on the notebook and after that we'll be make, creating a basic convolutional networks on TensorFlow also maybe on Jupyter so because it's comfortable to make tutorials on it so you can add text you can make different codes in different cells and so on okay so until now we have used a NumPy to build our neural networks so now I will step you through a deep learning framework that will allow you to build neural networks more easily. So machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow can speed up our machine learning development significantly. You can't even imagine about that if you didn't use it before. So this framework have a lot of documentation which you should feel free to read. And now in this tutorial, I will teach you to do the following in TensorFlow steps. So I'll show you how to in initialize variables and start your own session with TensorFlow. So I should mention that programming framework cannot only shorten our coding time, but it might also sometimes perform optimizations that also speed up our coding. So at first I'll use an import. Uh, this line means that I'll use uh, my TensorFlow on CPU. I'm using it because I have a GPU on my hardware. So we'll use NumPy and TensorFlow. I'll just run this. So we'll start with an example here with this loss formula. We'll, we'll use it to compute it. So here's a simple example right now, which I wrote. and. As you can see here, at first line, uh, we defined our i hat and we set it to be a 36 as constant and we gave it a name of y hat. Then we defined y with 39 as, where, uh, as our constant and also name is y. And next, uh, as you can see, we defined our loss variable where we have our computation here. So what we do here, here, we compute this formula exactly and we gave it the name of loss and then we use an initialization of global variables initializer and then after that we are writing uh, with transfer session as session and we run our variable initializer with session run and of course we are using our print to print our results. So I can run it by using a shift enter. And as you can see, it computed a difference of, so we can uh, calculate it in mine because 39 minus 36 will be three and three by two is nine. So that's right example. So, what I can say that writing and running programs in TensorFlow has the five following steps. So we should at first create tensors, variables, and as we use did here, variable and constants. So why we should write operations with, between these tensors? Our operation is here. And then we should initialize our tensor. Our initialization was did, done here. And then we are just creating a session and running the session. So as you can see here, and we get the print. Okay, next I'll move on next example. So here we have uh, five, two constants and one uh, multiplication, so operation. So what we should receive when we multiply five by 10? 
uh, you think we'll receive 50 I think yeah but we won't receive a 50 actually because as expected you won't see that 50 because you got a tensor saying that the result is a tensor that does not have the shape attribute and is of type integer of 32 so all you did was put in the computation graph but you have not run this computation yet so in order to actually multiply the two numbers you will have to create a session and run it. So below here uh, is a session I created, wrote and we'll run it. And okay, let's simply run our session. And here now you should see that our session made this multiplication in VC results. So to summarize, Remember, to initialize your variables, create session and run the operations inside the session. So, next, we also have to know about placeholders. A uh, placeholder is an object whose value you, you can specify only later. So, here is my placeholder. Just like here. Uh, so, so, specify values for placeholder. You can pass in the value by using a Feed dictionary, so feed, feed dictionary variable. So here I created a placeholder for x, so this allows us to pass in a number later when we run the session. So as you can see here, we can build this and we receive 6. So here we initialized our placeholder and here we simply wrote a what we should do our I mean operation and here we are giving a three number to our X and the operation is made and well it actually prints it out so let's move forward and I wrote a liner function here so let's compute the following equation as you can see here where W and X are random matrices and B is random vector so here our w will be of shape 4 to 3 x will be 3 to 1 and b will be 4 to 1 so not to waste our time i already wrote on and initialized these variables here and with shapes we need and we gave appropriate names to them and here you can see my y multiplication operation so here we are multiplying it so here uh, right now I'm creating a session and in another method before we were doing this in with transform session here I'm tr making it in another way so because there is uh, two ways I'll talk it about later so <clears throat> I'm creating here a session so I run the session of y so we are I am running this operation with these variables and simply we should receive our result as you can see we received an array of shape 4 by 1 as output so that's great it works so next we, as we were doing a sigmoid in our numpy tutorial uh, tensorflow offers a variety of community user neural network functions like tensorflow sigmoid and TensorFlow softmax so for this uh, part let's compute the sigmoid function of an input so what we'll do is we'll use a placeholder variable x so when running the session we should use the feed dictionary to pass in the input z so we'll have to uh, create a placeholder define the operations needed to compute the sigmoid using TensorFlow sigmoid and then we'll run, run the session so there is uh, two methods as I said before to run a session so if we run a session this way we should must I should we must close session at the end of our code and here if we run a session with it automatically closes so here I created a sigmoid function as you can see here and at first as before I'm um, declaring our placeholder so here will be uh, with name of x and here I'm calling uh, my sigmoid function 
with x as we created it before here not here but somewhere where we did this linear function compute oh sorry i'm calling here a tensorflow sigmoid but i call this with sigmoid and here in i function i'm calling a session so i'm calling sigmoid function and i feed my x as z so this z will go as x to here so that's it i will build this and let's see what we'll receive so here i receive that sigmoid from 0 is 0.5 and sigmoid of 12 is close to 1 it's everything is clear so to summarize now we know how to create a placeholder specify the computation graph corresponding to operations you want to compute how to create a session and run the session using fit dictionary so next we will come to the cost function computing the cost so we also can use a built-in function to, to compute the cost of our neural network so instead of needing to write code to compute this as function of a as you can see before in our numpy library numpy tutorials we were doing this now we can do it in one line of code in test form. so you'll see that the function is quite easily and our code should input z compute the sigmoid to get a and then compute the cross entropy cost g so we won't be uh, computing activation before so here is my also written a cost function and at first as before i'm creating my placeholders for logits and labels so it will be my z and y so i'm calling my loss function here well i i declare what is my cost function i'm not calling here at least yet and here i create a session here my cost i write what it will be my cost so i run the cost of this so i'm calling this here and i feed my logits as z to here and doing the same with y and then i'm closing the session so i'm um, i'll build this and here is few numbers as example so as you can see it computed our cost for four variables and here is my y well example for y and what is the cost of it it computed the cost that's much much simpler than we did in our numpy tutorial so yeah that's quite easy and next what we'll do is i'll talk about one hot encoding so many times in deep learning we will have a vector with numbers ranging from 0 to c minus 1 where c is the number of classes so for example if c is 4 then you might have the following y vector which you will need to convert as as you can see as follows so for example here is uh, 1 2 3 4 6 cl uh, 4 classes here 1 0 1 2 and 3 and this is as a list and we should or uh, convert them one hot vector well this is needed to do so for a softmax function uh, because in the converted representation exactly the one element of each column is hot so meaning set of y so to do this conversation in pi you might have to write a few lines of code so in TensorFlow we can use one line of code and this is very simple line and you'll see it so here as you can see i created a one, one hot matrix and here i take our labels and labels and as you can see c is our classes how many classes we have so we are calling a uh, tensorflow one hot function here and we are feeding our labels and c and don't forget be and be careful we are using of zero axis so here we are creating the session the here we are running our session 
so one hot matrix and yeah as you can see we are feeding what we need here and then we are closing our session so i'll build this and press again and as you can see it worked just fine for us and now we just made some one hot numbers with tensorflow keep in mind we are using tensorflow so the last one i would like to talk about in this short in the basic tutorial what is the initialize with zeros or ones matrix so we will learn how to initialize a vector of zeros and ones so the function we will be calling is tensorflow ones so to initialize with zeros we would we would call tensorflow zeros instead but right now it's once so these functions take in a shape and return an array of dimensions shape full of zeros and ones respectively so i made it the same as before so i creating a tensor using tensorflow once it is built in a function so here i create a session so i run the session with once and i close the session it's it's quite easy so but we should remember we share here creating a session then we are starting the session we are running the session and we are closing the session that's simply and let's try it as you can see i wrote a interesting example here if we are making five by three matrix we can also make five by five and whatever size you want we can create so that's great and i think this is a, a last step for our introduction tutorial and what we should remember i i made here uh short notes here so first of all tensorflow is a programming framework used in deep learning the two main object classes in TensorFlow are tensors and operations. And when we code our TensorFlow, you have, we have to take the following steps for these four following steps. So first, create a graph containing tensor, its variables and placeholders and operations. Then creating a session, initializing a session and running the session to execute the graph. So that's all for for this short introduction tutorial i don't want it to be too long because this is only an introduction if you want you can download this notebook or just go to my website there is also uh written or hold this tutorial in text and you can try this on python or whatever it doesn't matter and you can test it out so for now that's it and subscribe my channel like this video and soon we'll get more to more tensorflow tutorial videos thank you all for watching goodbye